Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this, the day of Pentecost. We are glad to have each and every one of you here, whether in person or online uh, at Salem Lutheran Church. Um, A couple of announcements before we begin our worship. Um, Visitor and prayer request forms can be found um, in the pew. They look like this. And so if you, uh, you can use these forms for prayer requests or you can uh, leave them, either way, you can leave them in the offering basket. Um, if you have any interest in learning more about Salem or want to be contacted, um, please fill out those forms. And if you're watching online, you can uh, just email us and we'll get you the information, we'll get the information we need from you as well. Uh, Bible studies are going to continue throughout the summer. I figure uh, we'll just uh, keep the fireside room open at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, and whoever shows up, uh, we're going to talk about the text for this coming Sunday. So if you are around on a Tuesday at 10, um, Bible studies will go all summer long, um, unless I am out of town for that Tuesday. But um, otherwise, uh, all are welcome to come and join us for the, that um, study, that time of study and fellowship. The Pentecost plants here today are for our neighbors. So today we will be delivering the Pentecost plants to our neighbors as a token of friendship and appreciation. And um, please speak with Elaine House if you can help delivering at the end of the worship. We'll kind of organize a a delivery crew and um, be on our way. Um, Owls, the older, wiser Lutherans at Salem, their next event is Tuesday, June 14th at 1 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. There will be a guest speaker presenting on the topic of public safety and scam awareness. Uh, for seniors. Anyone 55 plus is welcome. So if you have friends friends and family in that age bracket, um, feel free to invite them to this informational uh, time as well. I know that scams are are everywhere, so being aware of that is is crucial. Um, The Summer of Sustainability at Salem is continuing. The next two events will be held on July 10th and Sunday, July 17th, after worship service. They are both outdoor events. The first will feature various sustainability practices and ideas that everyone is welcome to learn about. And the second event will feature a composting demonstration from Dakota County. So be sure to mark your calendars and invite friends and family to those two events. Continuing in that theme, volunteers are needed for the gardens at Salem. So if you like gardening or want to learn more about gardening, we are in need of a few more garden keepers. Right now, there are not enough garden keepers for the gardens around the sign at the hall uh, at the corner of Hall and Bernard or the garden at the western side of the sanctuary. A helper for the rain garden is also needed. So training is available if you do not have any training or or know how to garden, this is your opportunity to learn, and um, you do not have to supply your own tools. And so if you are interested in that, please speak to Elaine House to volunteer. Um, You have seen the sign out front, but Vacation Bible School is coming soon. Um, It will be held in person at St. Stephen's during the dates of June 15th, uh, 22nd, 29th, and July 6th from 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. Families as well as kids are invited to attend, and the theme is Jerusalem Marketplace. The registration link is now available on the register for an event page on the website, and so please sign up and be sure to invite family and friends to please contact the church office if you need assistance with registration. And uh, in the same vein, volunteers are needed for the event. So ideally, we would like more than one leader for each group, ranging from pre-K to K, first to third grade, and fourth to fifth grade. And confirmation age kids are more than welcome to help lead a group as well. So the registration for volunteering for VBS is also available online. Um, Summer hymn selections uh, are going on today, and it's the last day to submit. Now, I know we didn't have the the actual form available last week. The form 
the request slips are actually available in the back of the sanctuary this week. So if you have a favorite hymn and would like it to be included within worship this summer, please fill out the slip and leave it in the offering basket, and we'll work it into our summer worship program. programming. Yeah. Um, and if you want to learn more about Salem and are considering becoming a member, and this goes out more to the online folks who might just catch this service at random or who were forwarded this service or, or any number of things. If you are in the area and just kind of popping in uh, with, with curiosity around Salem and what we're all about, um, what it would entail to be a member here, uh, please join the informational and exploring potential membership gathering on Sunday, July 10th at 10.45 in the Fireside Room. And remember, this is also the, um, the sustainability event Sunday, so even if you're just interested in gardening and you want to show up, you can learn about membership as well. Um, getting a second booster shot is uh, an important thing that we can all do if we are able to and, and eligible, and information on how to do that around COVID-19 booster shots is available online as well. The memorial service for Leona Barbeck is going to be this Thursday, June 9th at 11 o'clock a.m., with visitation starting at 10 o'clock a.m. The service will also be live streamed for those who cannot attend in person. And for all of those events, as I uh, continually try and speed through them. Um, the paper copies uh, are a limited number in the back if you need um, to check anything that I have just announced or if you're just curious about something um, that is coming up. And that concludes the announcements. So I'm going to invite all of us to stand as we are able to begin our worship with our thanksgiving for baptism, found printed in your bulletin. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are now a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gates of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, and praise and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 396.
gentleness blow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea you moved on the of sleep and over the eons you call to each thing awaken the slumbers and rise on your way swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with the law and the land. And down in the Oh. Uh-huh. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people. for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from Genesis, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. 
As they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. And then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they left the building, left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. The word of the Lord. And the second reading is from Romans. Chapter 8, beginning at the 14th verse. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our, our spirit that we are children of God. And... If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Scripture according to the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speak, about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. 
even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. In the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. You know, it surprised me to even write this sentence, but it's true. Pentecost is one of my favorite festival days in the church year. And it didn't used to be, but each year I have become more captivated with this vision of the church that bursts onto the scene here in the opening chapters of Acts. A vision we may often overlook, being as this holiday falls during the hype of so many secular events, like graduations and summer getaways, that, and, and Pentecost pales in comparison um, when compared to events like Christmas and Easter which society at large tends to get on board with, making this a very in-church holiday. You will never hear silly debates over whether to say Merry Pentecost or Happy Pentecost in public or at a coffee shop, because it's just not a thing. People don't worry about that. Yet here, in this holy day of celebration, we have an amazing story, sometimes even called the birthday of the church. As a group of disciples, men and women, including the called 11 and the elected 12th Matthias, who was never named again, they are gathered in a time of prayer and waiting. And all of a sudden, the Spirit drives them out into the streets to preach and proclaim Christ crucified and risen for the sake of the world. And more than just that, everyone who are, are within earshot of this good news understands it in their own language. The gospel is being translated to a whole new group and generation of followers on the spot. In the blink of an eye, the modern church and the body of Christ has grown new branches and brought forth new fruits as these many different groups hear the good news and take it home with them. A fresh starting point of God's gospel of love for the world. And therefore, a new living translation takes root. Now, I got my glasses when I was in the second grade, and um, I immediately have to put them back on because my eyesight is that bad. Um, for a string of years, I was getting a new prescription every year or so until about the eighth grade. Um, and then it has somewhat leveled out, but they're still pretty awful. Um, I remember the first time walking out of the eye doctors with a pair of new glasses my first classes, and seeing the leaves on the trees. Every individual leaf, well-defined, not just some mass of blurry green that I had gotten so used to. And with each new upgrade of my prescription, and maybe even sometimes when I bother to clean my lenses, I am struck by the leaves on the trees. And it's the first thing I look forward, I notice and look forward to. Pentecost is that moment when the church rece receives new glasses and is born anew, revealing the many different beautiful leaves of the trees. 
They didn't have to speak ancient Hebrew or Koine Greek. They could speak their own language, and they were part of the family. And what I love about this image of church is that each culture was not um, uh, what, that each person heard the word in a language that they could understand. Each person came with their unique identities and cultures, and the Spirit met them exactly where they were. Meaning the church never was a, a, a singular group or expression of faith, all looking the same, all sounding the same. Our first image of church is a group of Galileans preaching to a multicultural crowd using an abundance of languages to convey the message of Christ. Each new year for me, I have grown, um, as I have grown in this role in the church, Pentecost is like refreshing a prescription, helping me once again to see the diversity of God's amazing promise. The fact that we are not expected or called to blend in, to become some indistinguishable blob of green, but in fact we can be distinct against the blue sky. Brilliant leaves sharing in a tree of faith. And that is where the oneness is found. One faith, one hope, one baptism, one God. One community in Christ. It's all in that tree. But how beautiful it is to see it expressed and lived out through so many different perspectives and languages, experiences, and dreams. With each different translation and group of people who gather to hear and understand, we see the unique leaves that build up the church, that make the body of Christ, each with their own unique gifts. And with each season of Pentecost, we are called to check our eyes that we may see this work of the Spirit and recognize the church anew. Even dare to change our prescription if we need to, if our view of church has become stagnant, too uniform, and blurred together. Often excluding others because we can't see them clearly as beloved siblings. Pentecost helps us recognize the prophets, the men and women, the young and old, who are dreaming dreams and seeing visions, maybe outside of these walls, bringing newness of life to this world that we share. And we, in this spirit of faith, can see the neighbor and speak to them, not as some nameless, faceless being or just another unit to count for numbers, but as someone who shares in the grace of God and who deserves to hear what is proclaimed to us, what is promised to all. Meaning that the old formulaic approach to church invitations and evangelism may from time to time need an upgrade or a rethink. We cannot always paint with the same broad brush or stick with the same routines. When the spirit is blowing through new branches and shaking new leaves every day. And I know if we do this work out of genuine love and humility for the glory of God and not simply for numbers or pride or size, we can trust that the spirit will provide a lens through which there is understanding, a translation through which there is love conveyed and hope given and a community created. Now I know one of the great desires of this congregation is to bring in new folk, folks into the fold. It's my desire as well. More specifically, youth and young families. And honestly, that is the desire of many congregations these days. And the question is, what can we do to bring them in? It's a good question with great intentions. And yet for Pentecost, I might tweak it just a little. 
For as we look at the story of God's spirit at work, we may want to ask, what, we, what can we do to go out and meet them? The disciples and many followers of Christ were gathered together in the upper room play, praying for guidance. The people of Israel were gathered for the festival of Shavuot, otherwise known as Pentecost. It was a high holy pilgrimage holiday in the Jewish calendar that brought many back to the capital. And in this moment, the Spirit intercedes in order that these two groups can run into each other, can find each other in the streets, and share in the gospel. If we are to look around today, we may lose a little hope in the fact that there are many here who fit in the same categories, be it generation, complexion, and the like. There's nothing wrong with that. We may think also that we have missed our yearly opportunities of Christmas and Easter worship when we can catch those who are gathered here with family, maybe have the best worship experience ever and convince them to come back the next Sunday. I, I, I have those dreams and visions too. But this is Pentecost. And we as church post-Easter live in the season of the Spirit every day of our lives. Every day is filled with the opportunity to meet and to greet, to share and to grow. And I look around today and in the spirit of Pentecost, I see the tongues aflame upon each one of us. Each with our own unique abilities and languages which can be taken out into the world. And you may think, I only speak English and maybe not even that well. I mean, <laughs> you should see my manuscripts. They're, they're butchered as far as grammar goes. But um, if a group of Galileans equipped by the Spirit could speak to a street full of strangers from all over the world, then a gathering of Salem members in the season of Pentecost can trust that in that same Spirit, we can do that work today. We may not be, uh, be met with the languages of the past, but I know people here who are fluent in fishing. They can distinguish between a lure, lure and a spinner. It's important. Some are fluent in the arts and can recognize a Picasso from a Van Gogh. A few may be uh, fluent in films and can talk about mise-en-scene, and the structure of editing. Others are fluent in gardening and can talk about how to bring a seed to fruit. More in music and on and on and on. There are passions and pastimes that are well represented here that can speak the gospel in their own unique ways, translating from these pastimes and passions the good news of the gospel. How can God's good news be translated from this place and meet the child who loves stage plays or the, or the, uh, the kid who loves hiking or the child who's interested in puzzles? the family who could pick up quilting if given the opportunity, and the couple who just loves to volunteer. We are tasked with taking the language of the church, this vision of God's love and this promise of God's grace, this voice of God's people that we practice here together, that we pray together. We take that vision and we translate it out into the world. And so we trust in this story of Pentecost that the Spirit meets the neighbor and we meet our Savior through each other, through our likes and dislikes, our words and deeds, as the gospel is translated to people exactly where they are and exactly who they are. Let's renew our prescriptions and brush up our translations. And let's share the gospel of Jesus Christ 
in our world today. Amen. I invite all who are able to please rise. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection, for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially those facing war in Ukraine and those facing um, domestic abuse at home. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, deacons, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with our partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy. For all who suffer, the sick, the wounded, the grieving and brokenhearted, the hungry and exploited, those awaiting a diagnosis and those struggling with one, and all who are in need, in your, uh, in need of our prayers, that they will be consoled and healed by health care workers, counselors, family, and friends. Lifting up today the family and friends of Leona B., Lori, Tracy, Ashley B., the family and friends of Brian M., Jean, Jim L., Kathy, Linda, James, and all those we name now in our hearts. God, in your mercy. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share this peace with one another.
Invite all who are able to please rise. As we move into this time of the meal, we consider the many gifts which God has given us. And so we begin by saying together our offering prayer. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of earth that become the means of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Christ you Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We now pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Salem, all are welcome to receive this gift of grace, and if you have forgotten to pick up your individual um, cup at this time, you could raise your hand and an usher will get them to you. Um, otherwise, for those who are gathering online, remember that you too are a beloved child of God. And if you are in need of communion, please reach out to the office and we can make that happen. As we are gathered, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 400. God of tempest, God of whirlwind, as on Pentecost descend, drive us out from sheltered comfort as these walls your people send. Sweep us into costly service, bear with Christ to bear the cross. God of burning, all that blocks your purpose, purge through your church, Christ's living body, let your flaming spirit surge, where deceit conceals injustice, kindle us to speak your truth. God of thunder, shake us loose from lethargy. Break the chains of sin asunder. May we set us free. Crumble walls that still divide us. Make us one in Christ our Lord. one in Christ our Lord. God of passion, God unsleeping, stir in us love's restlessness. Where the people cry in anguish, may we share your heart's distress. Us from content with evil, claim us from your kingdom's work, claim us for your kingdom's work. Go in peace, share the good news. Christ is with you.